in theory. Data tries out a romantic relationship, which is supposed to be more interesting than exploring a section of the galaxy that defies all universal principles. <laughs> we start out with Data modifying some photon torpedoes to gather information from a dark matter nebula. This nebula is unexplored, and they don't know what to expect inside. I won't bring up how much I dislike the way the term dark matter gets thrown around in fantasy shows and movies masquerading as science fiction, but this is one of them. Data's co-worker Jenna talks to him about her relationship troubles, and Data says he's going to take it as an opportunity to study human romantic relationships. I was afraid this is going to be a Buffy crossover episode. They fire the special torpedoes into the nebula, and it lights up before they take the ship inside. In 10 forward, there's a musical performance, which they fake much better than that egregious display of pretending to play string instruments in Sarek. And two of their performers are Jenna and Data. Jenna says she wasn't happy with her performance, but Data reassures her that no one noticed how bad they sucked. <laughs> Afterwards, Jenna and Data are sitting with Keiko and O'Brien and forced feeling small talk, and Jenna is starting to become attached to Data. Keiko tells a typical married life story about her husband, which reminded me of why I got divorced. <laughs> and Jenna tells a similar story about Data, and even grabs his arm the same way. I was annoyed because I knew where this episode was going, and it was not looking forward to it. While working on the torpedoes, Jenna kisses Data, seeming to expect some sort of response. We've already seen this whole thing play out in the Instance of Command episode, so I expected it to go the same way. In 10 Forward, Guinan practices her mixology skills and asks Data to try her new concoction. But Data's a robot. How is he going to be able to determine whether it tastes good or not? He asks her for relationship advice. And she walks out from behind the bar. I thought she was going to end up kissing him too. <laughs> but she says she cannot give him any advice. Data openly tells her that he is not capable of love, but she still talks to him like she would with anyone else. Yeah, this episode is great. <laughs> Jordy finds Data's cat Spot wandering the halls, and Data says the door to his quarters can only be triggered by humanoid forms, but the computer says no one was there, and they don't really seem to think much of it. Okay, I have the question here. Do other people have pets on the Enterprise, like other cats and dogs? Do they walk them through the hallways? Are they expected to stay in their rooms? Maybe they take them on the holodeck and walk them around an imaginary park. But I would think if they have a job on the ship, they have to leave their dog alone for long periods of time. Well, we know they have a nursery. They might have some kind of pet care area. That's true. And everybody seems to just spend their time not doing anything important, so... <laughs> <laughs> Did it ask Jordy if he should pursue a relationship with Jenna? Because if anybody knows about healthy relationships... It's the guy who made a fictional romantic simulation based on a real person who then actually showed up, and it was creepy as hell. <laughs> he ends up telling Data to go to someone who is better at giving advice, but due to Jordy's lack of success with relationships, Data decides to do the opposite of what he recommends and goes to talk to Troy instead. She was the only one that actually gave Data advice based on him, not based on what they would do. Ah, uh, that's a good point. He moves on to Worf. Klingons do not pursue relationships. They conquer that which they desire. He then goes to Riker, who just seems to be excited for Data to get laid. For the most part, these characters are not actually addressing the fact that Data doesn't have feelings and has no sexual desire. Instead, they all look at it from the perspective of a normal human and seem to expect Data to get the same thing out of a relationship as anyone else. Except for Troy, I felt. And no one seems to talk to Jenna about any of this, which really bothered me. He goes to Picard last, and his response was probably my favorite. And I would be delighted to offer any advice I can on understanding women. When I have some, I'll let you know. So out of all these characters, the only one to give him real and helpful advice was Troy. And in the biz, we call that a twist. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up taking flowers to Jenna. And I guess space water? is good for a really long time. It bothered me that she pulled out those dead flowers, which must have smelled terrible, by the way, out of that vase and immediately replaced them with these new flowers. Data goes into relationship mode, and Jenna keeps talking about how sweet he is. Her old boyfriend must have really been a piece of shit. And of course, everything Data does is ridiculous and over-the-top goofy, and it was done for laughs, but I was exhausted just watching it. I was more frustrated with the Jenna side of things because it was pretty dumb. When Picard goes to his writing room, all this stuff is on the floor. 
so he calls Worf to chastise him for playing in his office and not picking up his toys when he was finished. <laughs> when he suggests it could have been a poltergeist, Worf gives him a dubious look. But they've already encountered so much weird stuff, why would he be skeptical of that? Worf can't find anything out of the ordinary, and recommends that they do something, but of course Picard says no. Let's just see how it plays out. I'm sure it will be fine. Well, Patrick Stewart directed this episode, so he would know. <laughs> Jenna shows up to Data's quarters and brings him a cheap piece of plastic that must have been the result of a malfunctioning replicator. <laughs> and she's upset that he doesn't do what she wants him to do because he is a robot. She must not have been keeping up with the show. And when she leaves, there's a weird, loud, clearly perceptible thing that melts away some of the wall, but of course nobody sees or hears it. Inside the nebula, a planet they detected earlier keeps appearing and disappearing. It was weird how they're so thrown off by all this stuff happening, but they clearly said earlier that this dark matter nebula was completely new and unexplored and they didn't know what to expect. Again, this is something where they're throwing in the term dark matter, assuming people aren't going to know anything about dark matter. But I mean, I don't know anything about dark matter. I figured, because you're a fan of Star Trek. So instead of leaving and then trying to figure it out, they decide to stay put and try and figure it out, which we've seen before, and it never works out. Then they go to check out an issue with the observation lounge and find further evidence that it could be the result of a poltergeist. <laughs> or Worf just building forts now and still not cleaning up after himself. Data is turning on the charm. His romance subroutine apparently includes him acting creepy. And it causes Jenna to get upset because he doesn't do what she wants him to do because he's a robot. <laughs> she asks Data to kiss her, then asks what he was thinking while they kissed, and he spouts out a list of unrelated things, which upsets her because she is a simpleton. <laughs> the crew is still working on the mysteries of the nebula, and Riker makes the suggestion to leave and continue investigating from outside, and Picard seems to think that's a good idea, which it was before too. But now, for some reason, they're going to do it. These people are all idiots. <laughs> Before they can go, the ship experiences more effects that cause damage, which forces them to stay put. And it results in an unexpected but kind of cool death of a crew member. Data tells them that the dark matter in the nebula is causing gaps in the fabric of space. Just what I was hoping for, more typical Star Trek pseudoscience bullshit. They can't pick up the gaps in time to maneuver the ship around them, so they decide to send a shuttle to scout ahead because it's more maneuverable. And for no real reason, Picard decides that he will man the shuttle. So while Picard is playing through his Sega Saturn video game... <laughs> there are space gaps all over the place, even though they seem to be encountering them only very sporadically before. And Picard turns out to be a shitty pilot, and keeps flying into the gaps, and ends up having to be beamed out. And they didn't even make it out of the nebula yet, so they just guess their way through the last million kilometers which seemed idiotic based on how many crazy adjustments Picard was telling him to make every three seconds. Relative batting, 27. Make that 285, mark 255. But of course, they end up getting out pretty easily. And instead of the episode ending here, we have to slog through the end of the relationship stuff, which happens. The end. <laughs> Jenna visits Data, who is setting up for dinner. And she tells him she has realized that trying to date an emotionless android was a dumb idea for an episode. I mean, it was a dumb idea. And breaks up with him. But even now, she doesn't grasp the reason why. is because he's a robot. I did like the very end when Data says he will delete the program and doesn't react to how sad she looks as she leaves. I wish I could have deleted this episode from my memory. In theory. Overall... I don't think the idea of someone trying to date a robot is a bad idea in theory, but Data, as he states multiple times in this episode, doesn't have emotions, and Jenna is looking for an emotional relationship, so in this case it didn't make any sense. I thought it was dumb that no one else pointed that out. I get that they were supposed to be treating Data like a real person, but the way they handled that in this episode made all the other characters look like idiots. It was also dumb that no one else tried to talk to Jenna about it. I thought her acting was a little overdone. It felt like I was watching a 90s sitcom at times. I was glad that they kept Data pretty consistent at least and didn't have him suddenly finding emotions that he didn't know were there or something dumb like that. The B-plot was just a bunch of nonsense ideas just to have something there going on in the background and Picard piloting the shuttle was especially nonsensical. This was not a good episode, but it wasn't insultingly bad like some of the other ones we've seen and at least it wasn't boring but it's definitely an episode I will never watch again. I thought about giving it a D+, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a C-. I give it a D. 
Okay, first off, Jenna is an idiot. The focus on Data having a relationship is not just something we've already seen, but it was irritating the first time. I didn't find it interesting, I thought the whole thing played out way too simplistically, and took Data's character backwards. And even in the end, Jenna's realization of why Data will never be who she wants him to be is based on her own opinions, when the real fact-based answer is because he's a robot, you f***ing idiot! <laughs> And all of his humorous reactions and very dumb things, to me, were a callback to season one. He has grown a lot as a character since then, but this episode felt like it was walking backwards and it was frustrating. I did some background reading on this one, and I thought it was interesting that the writers and producers were over the moon about the relationship part of this episode, but they felt they had to throw in some weird space anomaly B-plot, which is why it felt so out of place. I wish the episode had been reversed, with that being the main thing, I mean, if freaking killed someone, it's making entire planets disappear, but they act like this whole matter-altering, dangerous as f physics to find dark matter pockets sitting out in the middle of space is just, eh. And then the whole idea just gets thrown out entirely by having them not even make it out and saying, f it, we'll just wing it for this last million kilometers. And I would have thought that in the situation they were in, Data wouldn't really have a lot of time to pick flowers or sing in Italian or paint in his room. This one was frustrating. Agreed.